first thing we're gonna do is seal our surface. These are gonna live outside of my front porch and my front porch is unprotected. Well, it has a porch, but the wind just comes straight at my house and it manages to get the, do the door every time. So I'm gonna show you in this project how to prepare it for outdoor living. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a multi-purpose sealer by DecoArt and we're going to put some out and we're gonna seal all the edges. We're gonna use a foam roller. This is a high density foam roller. You can put a link down below. If you love these videos, make sure that you give us a like, a thumbs up, that kind of stuff. And then we're just gonna roll it. And when we get to our edges, we wanna make sure to not have too much medium on our roller because we don't wanna make a big mess. And the way that will look Rolling your edges is gonna be like this. I've used up most of the medium. I'll just go right along and I'll clean it up on both sides. So you'll do all your sides and let it dry. All right, we are all dry. If you need to, if you have a rough surface, you can go ahead and knock it back with a finer grit sandpaper. This is a 220 grit. Just to keep it smooth, as your paint layers up, as you're painting, if you have a rough surface when you start, it will build and catch on all the rough areas and it'll just get rougher and rougher. So it's better just to keep it under control as you go. I really, truly, truly do prefer to have my sandpaper on one of these um, sanding blocks. Um, it is like a game changer. Okay, so to do our fun background technique, it's gonna look really weird when we get started. I'm gonna use my wet roller from my varnish, from my um, sealer, and I'm gonna need another piece of this. I didn't leave myself much room. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up some of that, color this way, way, way a lot. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna work it into my roller. Really pushing on it. Now, because I'm not stenciling with this, I don't have to offload. Um, and we did decide to use the thumbs on the mittens, thumbs out, so that when they layer, you'll be able to see both thumbs. If you do it the other way, one of the thumbs disappears. Okay, so we're just getting a base coat layer for this layer, and then the second coat will be our um, blending layer. You're gonna love this technique, it's so much fun. Using a roller to base coat is fast. So fast. And a little goes a long way once you get it loaded. You do wanna keep um, your roller lightly loaded when you get near your edges so you don't bleed over the edge. Okay, so just nice and even coat. I'll get the other one and then we'll get started on that fun technique. I went ahead and popped a second coat on the top of that just to make it all solid. If I do this technique and my base isn't solid, I can't fix it. So that's super important to know. And then after I get done, I am a little bit rough. And so I'll get, give it the sand, but it doesn't hurt the paint at all, even though the paint was just done, you know, five minutes ago. Okay, brush off all your excess. Um, sometimes it can be your roller that's giving you texture um, because the roller can leave little light raised like bubbles. Um, so if you don't want any of those raised bubbles, keep rolling it when your roller is dry and it'll decrease the bubbles and make it really smooth. Okay, so we're gonna go into our base color. And we're going to get that wet. I'm using this um, washable um, mylar for my palette. Um, that's super good to have a flat thing to do this technique. Um, if you are on, you could use a sheet of wax paper or something like that, but it, it'll move around. These are really nice because they don't shuffle around. Okay, I want a good wet coat on here. I didn't think I was gonna use all that paint, but I think I'm gonna use every bit of it. Um, so we're gonna get it nice and wet. And this might be where I wanna keep a misting bottle because if it dries up, it will not work. So I'll just be ready at the ready with my water bottle. And wet it and then kind of re-wet it. Okay. 
Okay. And we get out our brighter blue. This is number 14, and that other color was number 62. You can get color chips on our website. That's studior12.com. And then I'm going to load the nose, I call this the nose, of my roller with that bright blue. Okay. Try to make it move around. Come along, little guy. And then we'll roll it over here on that same blending strip. And then I'll get the nose kind of going right there. And then we come along here, we keep the nose pointed out. And we just walk it in and around. I'm lifting this end of my roller to not have it get um, super like um, pushy and blendy back over there. Oops, and then I just struck my fingernails across that. And we just follow the shape of the mitten. This is such a fun technique, you guys. Do not be afraid of this. If you need practice, practice on a box and then it won't seem as scary. I am gonna walk this in just a little bit and then I'll walk it back out just a little bit just to even things out. Okay. Um, don't do what I almost did. I almost rolled down with the light in my dark area. Do not do that. Okay, that stayed wet a good long time. In order to do this on my second mitten, I'm going to base it with just a foam brush. And that way I'll have it wet with the foam brush and I won't have this already blended because this is like the perfect blend right here. And then we're gonna let this dry and I'll show you some sponging techniques next. There are good sea sponges and then there are not so good sea sponges. Um, this sea sponge has a very squashed look to him. He'll be good if I trim out some of his little bits and then you can do a test to see if you like the pattern it leaves. See how this one is kind of nice and open um, and that makes the most beautiful spatters, or not spatters, stippling. Sponging, texture. Okay, I'm gonna get it in my water bucket and I'm going to Squeeze out all the water I can. And then I'm going to put it between paper towels and I'm gonna step on it and that's gonna give me foot pounds of pressure to dry that off. I want it moist, not wet. And you can see that made a big difference in how much water there was in that. This little guy needs to be sliced off. I don't like him. He's got some weight to him and he is crunchy a little bit. You'll find your sponge after a couple of years, you'll find your sponges getting smaller because you'll trim them. Um, that is not a big deal. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our water bottle and we're gonna mist. This isn't dry, um, it doesn't have to be wet, but you just need to mist it with your water. We're gonna go into our dark color and then I'm just going to mush it on my palette and in the darker areas, I'm gonna give it some texture. And now I can go into my light color, can give that a little mist. And actually, I think I'm gonna incorporate this guy. So if I think something's creeping out, I can use a clean sponge to blend and just blend it back and forth. Okay, and then if I want my sponge to get smaller, I can wrap it along and give it a decreased area. And the goal is to increase the darkness around the outer edge. and to have a little bit of texture creeping into the middle. So see how that got strong right there? Clean sponge. And then I can drag some of that 
slightly dampened blue into the middle just to give it texture all over. Then we can take our white and our painting fingers and we can do just a little bit with white. I think with our white, I'm gonna pre-wet it with the little um, soft tealy color number 62 and then spray one more time. I don't want this to be overbearing. I just want it to be soft and then I'll blend it on the palette and then we'll go in, oh, not enough. Look at how dreamy that is. That's because we pre-watered. I'll skip the sing song from now on, but it's really cool, it's exciting. She love to paint, love it. So then I can take a clean area, sponge off. I've got a little reflection going on right now, so I have to kind of get my light angle where I can see it. Okay, I think I might jockey in and out of here. Just look for what you like. And the neat thing about sponging is you can take it, you can dance back and forth, two steps forward, two steps back, until you like the color. So you don't have to like land finished when you very first start. So play with going back and forth between the wet colors. All right, now I'm gonna show you two ways that you can darken the edges. And notice here, this one is lighter and looser at the edge. And then this has got kind of sunk in a little bit. So it's framed. I'm gonna take my dome brush with no water into my dark number 72. And I'm going to wipe off the excess. This is super important. And then we're just going to dust. We're gonna start on the edge. The darkest paint will come off first. So we'll start right on that edge. And then I'll lighten my pressure and I'll just kind of focus on the corners and a little light. I mean, I'm not delivering anything there. If I push on my brush, I can get a little bit more, but it's very, very dry. So we can go over here. You want to keep your brush turned out, focusing it where the tip is near the edge of your project. And then I'm gonna not do so much over here, but do it more in the heavier areas, like the tip of the thumb and on the tip of the mitten. If I mess up, then I can take my sponge back out, I can mist my paint, and I can go backwards in the colors that I used to soften the look. So you're never out of your always out of harm's way with this project because you can always go backwards and forwards and it's that little dancing thing that you can do. The second thing that you can do is you can take the Media Fluid Acrylics, these are deco arts, and they are um, paint without filler. So you'll never, ever, ever try to base coat with these, um, but you do, you can get a beautiful depth and boldness and brightness with these colors. Um, I'm gonna put just a little bit out there. And I'm going to use the um, shoe shine trick, which I use quite frequently. So take your two fingers, you put it in your, this is my brush, and I just make it a nice soft little pad that's rounded, dip in water, dry on the paper towel, and then I'll dip just the toe of it, the nose of it, in some of that paint. Now this is gonna be electric, so we wanna be very sparing on this. So I can go in my corners, and I can make things sing. So see how the brightness of this side is different than the brightness of this side. I can build that up. And if I wanted to incre increase the drama, I could let that dry and then I could just do a touch of the media acrylic black in the corner or mix the two together and that would just increase the drama. I don't want it to get too electric looking, but I do love all of the, like the high contrast. And that high contrast is gonna make your white lettering pop. All right, we're ready for words. We're gonna use a stencil. This is a Studio R12 stencil. We have more than 6,000 titles of stencils. We're really close to 7,000. And we have them in sizes. So if you're looking for something for lettering, it's all made by graphic designers that are professional and they are just beautiful stencils, bridged by artists for artists. So um, they're always gonna be quality. We're gonna use our dry dome brush. We're gonna pick up white paint. 
We're gonna wipe off, We're always offloading. We do a lot of offloading. If you can learn anything from what I'm showing you here, offloading is the secret to success in painting. More is not better. Okay, now we're gonna to go to our lettering and we're going to swirl. I've got this taped in two spots, but I've got a really long stencil, so I'll just anchor it and hold it down at the top. And I always start with really light pressure. And then I wanna peek, okay? So I'm gonna lift that up and see how much I can see it. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and Go all the way down. I think I'm gonna end up needing a drop shadow. And the reason why is I'm doing white letters over um, a light color in the middle. So what I wanna do to do my drop shadow is I'm gonna get a little bit of this white paint on the darker edges. And that will anchor, it will show me where I need to put my stencil back at. Okay. So take that away, give it a shot with the blow dryer. See how that's not showing up very much. If I do more white, it's still, still not gonna show up. So the way with, that we do the drop shadow with the stencil, so um, I can't tell you the terrified looks I've received when I've been teaching seminars all across the country um, when I say, let's do drop shadowing with just a liner brush. Um, that will bring people, grown women, two tiers, okay? So doing this with a stencil, it's fast, it's accurate, it's simple, and you don't need advanced painting skills, so we're gonna make this easy. Stencils make painting easy. So we'll go here, and we're gonna offset it. So if I put it right back on top, I'd just be base coating again. So I'm gonna shove it over to this side, and then shove it down, and then I'm gonna look down here to see if I'm even. So I'll use the paint that I did and look for an even distance in my drop shadow. Okay, I think that's good. Get a different brush. You go through quite a few of these brushes and they're difficult to find sometimes. So you wanna make sure that you buy them when we have them in stock. Supply chain things are really, really real. Okay, and I think instead of doing a blue with this, cause now we're getting real blue, I think we're gonna go with, um, hmm, I think maybe a dark gray. I think we're gonna go with black. And then I'm thinking in my head, black and white are super contrasty, probably gonna go with gray. We want a hint of it, we don't want it to take over. But those are the reasons you would choose different colors. I'm gonna put my brush in water, you don't want that paint to dry on your brush. Pick up our gray. And then we'll just swirl. And we wanna be careful of our snowflakes. And I wanna peek and see how dark that looks. I think that'll show. These dome brushes, um, and if you um, are in the comments on YouTube, if you wanna leave a comment about how great these brushes make your um, stenciling, please do so you can let other painters know how wonderful they are. It will solve all your bleeding under problems. Okay, so we just give everybody a smooth swirl. We've got this multi-masker tool. I'm gonna to get right over here. I'm gonna get right in that area and I don't want that. So these help mask so that you don't get messes on other parts of your painting project. We call that ghosting, by the way. And it's not the kind of ghosting that is social media ghosting. This is the ghosting that casts a little shadow on the next door neighbor color. Okay, and we'll go over here. This um, multi-masker has quickly become the number one product that we sell right after the dome brushes on our website because it supports all of the stencilers. And remember that our stencils are reusable and durable 
and you can wash them. And we have videos on how to take care of your brushes and your stencils so that they last a long time. And I don't typically wash my stencils right after I use them. I will generally wait until I've done two or three coats of paint. But um, if you use red and you're going to do something with white, um, the red, for whatever reason, lifts off of the stencil easily. So it'll make a nice pink glow on your white. So you want to be careful with that. You might have to wash your stencil with that. Okay. And now we take that, put it in water, and we're going to lift this up. Give it a shot. See how fast that was? What did that take? Three minutes? Um, it's so easy to be precise with a stencil. Now we're dry. We're going to pick up our stencil. We're going to replace it, reposition it where our white was. The only thing I don't like about doing this with a stencil is I know how to do this without a stencil. And it's faster for me, but I know it's not easier for you. So we always show this way because doing it with a liner is definitely an advanced skill. Okay, so now we go back in. We're gonna swirl. I'm gonna stay kind of away from my snowflakes right now because I don't want to necessarily be dedicated to where they are. I might want to move them around a little bit, so I'll just stay out of them. Do one coat of swirl, and then I'll probably switch to stippling. Stippling will cover better, but the swirl blends better, and the swirl is faster by a ton. I really don't enjoy pouncing stippling when I'm stenciling. I really do like the swirl. All right, and now we're going to switch to stippling. Okay, now we'll peek and see if that's enough coats. Look at how that pops, it's so great. And I think that's absolutely perfect. Oh my goodness, oh, the magic of stencils. Love, 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 okay. Next, here's what we wanna do next. We wanna do some spattering, but I also, I'm trying to debate, I'm gonna do some snowy letters and I think you're gonna love the snowy letter trick. So I think I do need to spatter first and then we'll show you snowy letters last. So, Change of plan. I forgot my snowflakes. So let's get some snowflakes on there. I've got a big sheet with snowflakes on it. I think I'm gonna use that mostly over here on the plain mitten. And then I've got the snowflakes that exist on this one. And I just, some of them are cut off because this is meant to be just like a little framed thing. So I do not want them cut off on mine. I want it to be on the edge. So I'm gonna position them so that cut off meets my edge and just do a little scumble. Okay, I'm gonna show you a magic trick with snowflakes. So this one should be a strong, dark snowflake. Okay, so when I do that one, in order for him to be visible, he needs to be really powerful. So if I want to do something that's not so strong and dark, we'll go over here with this guy in the corner. This is white on top of that dark blue on top of that enhanced dark blue. So what I'll do is I will do a lighter looking snowflake and I've got no paint over here, just super dusty and see if I like that. I might need to make this one a stronger one. So let's take a little peek. And so see how that barely shows over there? You can also drop shadow snowflakes. So just know that you can do whatever you want with this. Um, I think I am gonna make that stronger. But you can do them dusty. So that, that needed to be strong over there because that's a big area. Okay, so now we'll go over here into our corner. 
and just start moving snowflakes around. If I wanted to have a snowflake in the middle of these words, that would be where I would do a light one. So let me show you that. So I can totally layer this stuff. And so it's barely there. You can barely, it just adds to the, the layers of the textures. Okay, and then we go with like bigger snowflake over here. So I'll do it strong out of the lettering. And then when I come into the lettering, I'm gonna back it out so it doesn't compete. Okay, now it's sitting kind of behind that. I'm gonna grab one big guy from here. Maybe we'll grab a different shape one. And then soften. Get that good feller. And maybe we, maybe I feel like that's gonna be overkill. So go down here to this guy. I love that you can use different snowflakes off of each of your stencils. So if you have a line on a stencil and you want to make you know some line detail just pull that piece in you don't even have to cut up your stencils or anything just use parts of your stencil to create something completely unique and you Okay, we're getting good. Let's make this guy be up here. All right, I think I'm gonna call this and now we're gonna embellish with our spattering. So spattering is a blast, you are gonna love this. I have my very own special technique. We're gonna take our White Wonder brush they come in sizes. This one is the three quarter. Um, the size I've used for a really long time is skinnier. Um, honestly, this gets the job done faster, so that's perfect. Either one is acceptable. Now we're gonna go into this dark, 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 dark blue, and I'm going to make it inky with water and just really wet. The wetter your water or the wetter your paint that you're using, the bigger your spatter will be. And then I need a big fat brush handle. Oh, I love this one. This is this beautiful feathering brush, um, but we're gonna just spatter off. It's gonna go everywhere. We literally find them on the cameras and we've got some way over there on a monitor, like they go everywhere. And we wanna tap off the excess. And so it's spattered all the way to the end right here. So now that we've done that, we're gonna keep our brush pointed to the outer edge of our project. So I'm gonna turn, whoops, hi. Just got a big old splotch right there. If you have anything painted on the back of your project, then you're gonna to wanna to have a towel underneath so you can turn the towel and the towel will wipe up any excess spatters. In this case, um, I'm not going to paint on the back of my mittens. Okay, so now I'm gonna anchor just want spatters around my outer edge. This is not snow. This is just accent. So it's just one more layer. So by anchoring it, I'm giving it control. I can lift my brush up to get a wider spatter range. Reload. Your paint should not be creamy. It should be kind of milky. Spatters that are too, um, too dry, you'll know it right away as soon as you see them. They're gonna be super tight and not very pretty. Ooh, hi. What happens if you do that? Do you see what I just did there? Okay, you can take a Q-tip. In this case, I have a foam applicator. So I could take a little corner of a paper towel and I could clean up the mess that way. So I love showing how to clean up your mistakes because we all do it. There's not an artist around that doesn't mess up. 
It's just part of that creative process. Okay. Now for the snow. Wash my brush out. I'm just kind of squishing it on the bottom of the water basin. And then I get my white. And notice I'm just layering these paints on top of this palette. Um, if I were at home, I would just take it to the sink and rinse it um, after I got it all dirty. I don't have that kind of facility here in this building, so I end up layering things um, and not always recycling them. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna snow right through the middle. So snowing is you're gonna hold it up above your project and you're just gonna let it snow flake all over the middle area. Need some more. That is just gonna make everything look really, really, really cool. Okay, and then if I want some jazz, this shows a little jazz hands, right? Then I can go over here and I can anchor and aim. My brush needs to be about an inch in front of where I want the spatter to land. Okay, and it needs to be aiming in that direction. So I can just give it a nice sharp hit and I can make those snowflakes sing. And once again, that adds that other piece of layer. Hot dog, right? This looks so good. Okay, let me get these spatters dry, and then I am going to show you how to do snowy letters with glitter. Okay, so here is the piece de resistance. We are going to snow the tops of our letters. So I've got all my spatters dry. They take a long time to dry, so make sure you really hit them. And then I can do a couple of things. I can go right up here, and I can make some snowy drizzles. And look for your white space. There's a big open space here. Don't make them all the same. You can make some wide, different lengths. Make some just like little bumps. This just adds all the difference. Okay, and I like that little um, carry it around the corner right there. Okay, and we can make that guy a little bit bigger. Connect some dots. Yeah, okay. And now you can go over, maybe we just go onto our snowball in our fight. And we can just take our lettering just on the very top Give it some nice little snowy drizzle. Isn't this fun? Oop. So what do you do if you do that? You get in there with your finger, clean it up. If you live in a hot, dry climate, you're gonna wanna glitter as you go because that snow will dry and get a crust and the glitter won't stick. I think this just adds a really cool texture to this. Okay. Got my glamour dust, and I'm just going to go on top of that. Really should start at the top. And get on top of my glitter tray. This will keep all my glitter in place. Glitter costs more than blood these days, I think.
And if I wanted to, I could go on, dust this stuff off, and I could go with just a little bit more snow. and give it some accents of a bigger glitter. So you could layer your glitter too. Like I think I want some up there. I like those little big pieces. Okay, tap. Lovely, okay, so we let this dry. And then once that's dried, then we will brush off the excess. If you want to keep your glitter in one place, you can spray it with Krylon 1311 matte spray, and that will seal down your project for outdoor. You can spray both sides and your edges, and you'll be ready to go.